The metaverse. Vaguely defined as the next evolution of the internet, it proposes the unification of virtual worlds using a combination of virtual reality, augmented reality, and the interoperability of games, social networks, and the real physical world. Many companies have joined the metaverse bandwagon. Epic with Unreal Engine 5 and a series of related acquisitions, Microsoft, Unity, Roblox, and Facebook going as far as changing their name to Meta. But why is NVIDIA? Media, a GPU maker at heart, so invested in the metaverse. As it turns out, the promise of the metaverse could realize Jensen Huang's dream of turning NVIDIA into the next Apple, and one innovation in particular, which I exclusively revealed two years ago on this channel, could do for NVIDIA what the iPhone did for Apple. Today's video is sponsored by URCDKeys.com. If you buy a retail Windows 10 key, you will probably spend $100 or more. But if you buy an OEM key using a service like URCDKeys, it will be less than $15 after you use the coupon code C25. The keys work globally, and if you want Windows 11, what I recommend you do is just buy Windows 10 and get a free upgrade while you can. Personally, I use Windows 10 Pro. Once you've made your purchase, using a variety of different payment options available, you will instantly find the key in your purchased orders on the website. Click Get Keys and copy the key. Then, after you've installed Windows 10 Pro, of course, in Windows, press Start and type in Activate and click on Activation settings. Then click change product key, paste in the code and click next. That's it. Quick and easy and your Windows is now activated. If you need Office 2021 Professional, you can use the same 25% discount code C25 and get it for just $59.98. Since you're over there, check out the back to school sale of 50% off of PC peripherals like gaming mice, chairs, headsets and a slew of cool looking mechanical keyboards. Boards. Thank you to URCD Keys for sponsoring today's video. Click the links in the video description to get your OEM Windows keys today. One thing that has come to define NVIDIA is their unique ability to fully potentiate their core product, the GPU, with uses that go beyond its original purpose. In the late 90s, the GPU was created to accelerate 3D graphics in games. Towards the late 2000s, with NVIDIA introducing CUDA as a programming language for computation applications, the GPU transcended gaming into the world of science, simulating general physics. In the 2010s, with a research resurgence of artificial intelligence thanks to an unprecedented amount of training data being available to researchers and hardware finally being fast enough to compute AI algorithms, again NVIDIA took the GPU further than it had ever gone with a huge push in software to use GPUs as training and inference processes for AI. And now, yet again, Jensen Huang sees the opportunity to squeeze yet more life out of the GPU, with the metaverse representing perhaps the biggest business opportunity in the company's history. The metaverse is the Internet in 3D, a network of connected, persistent virtual worlds. The current applications of this metaverse vision are in augmented reality showcases for products. So, for instance, if you want to buy a new sofa, you can use AR glasses and see how that sofa fits into your living room and order one from the manufacturer according to your specifications. Digital twins are another application. So these are, for instance, a one-to-one -one representation of a car factory in the digital realm, where the car manufacturer can optimize their production lines by simulating changes first in the digital twin and then applying them to the real factory. And of course, games, with Fortnite being an example of a very basic implementation of some of the metaverse concepts. Concepts. So far, this might seem pretty basic. Where the metaverse part starts to have some weight is in all of these different worlds sharing assets that can be transferred between them, making them part of the same universe or metaverse, hence the name. So a sofa that you buy from IKEA can be transported into a level of a game or into the digital twin factory floor of BMW. With this comes the opportunity of one-of-a-kind items that you can own and that transfer in between applications. 
weapons. So let's say you have crafted a powerful sword in The Elder Scrolls 6. You can use that same sword in a different game, trade it at a virtual eBay auction house, or have it on display in your virtual home. These are just some very basic applications, and whether or not this appeals to you is not that relevant. I'm sure there are people out there who have no interest in the internet, yet that then stop it from revolutionizing the way we do almost everything in this world. Another huge opportunity for the metaverse is in the training of robots using AI. If you have a digital twin of the real world, you can train a robot to interact with it through billions of failed attempts, something that could not be done in the real world. You can have a robot in a real car factory learning how to correctly pick up cars by dropping them a million times. Once trained in the digital twin, you deploy the robot in the real world where it will be prepared for all manner of scenarios. There are, however, two huge challenges in making this metaverse dream a reality. Firstly, how do you make all of these different applications share items or data between them when they're built on different engines, different platforms, possibly even in different programming languages, and defined in different ways? And secondly, how do you make the metaverse a seamless, easy-to-use experience and without the need of a bulky VR headset? So, for the first challenge, connecting all the different universes is the first major bet from NVIDIA. This will come in the form of USD, or Universal Scene Description, which was already in use in NVIDIA's Omniverse. It's an interchange framework invented by Pixar in 2012, and is basically a common language for defining, packaging, assembling, and editing 3D data. So, just like the internet needed HTML as a universal tagging mechanism, the metaverse needs USD. It's lingua franca, so to speak. Of course, as a byproduct of the metaverse, there's a huge opportunity to sell hardware. For content creators wanting to create items in the metaverse, there are NVIDIA certified laptops. And for large corporations wanting to host these virtual worlds, there's the NVIDIA OVX computer system, basically a data center rack full of NVIDIA GPUs designed to handle large digital worlds. Getting early into the metaverse business means NVIDIA can create a certification program for their own hardware hardware, hardware from AIBs, and even for developers. A 3D internet where everything in the real world is simulated is potentially the largest TAM a maker of 3D accelerators could have. If one goes in early, and if one builds the tools that will make the metaverse a reality in the first place. So far, so good. Assuming this will materialize, NVIDIA is already placing itself ahead of a huge new market. There is a problem, however, the user, and that leads us to the second and challenge to creating the metaverse. So far, the interest in VR and AR has been very limited. The headsets are complicated and bulky for the average user. There isn't enough good content to justify the expense. The setup can be cumbersome. And there are issues like motion sickness that outright exclude a great number of people. So how will NVIDIA solve this challenge? Well, in past videos, I already discussed how NVIDIA wants to be the next Apple with their own ecosystem, their own platform, a walled garden of NVIDIA hardware and software. How did Apple become one of the largest companies in the world in just a couple of decades? With the iPhone. While there were smartphones before the iPhone existed, they were cumbersome, bulky, unintuitive, with poor screens and poor user experience. The iPhone introduced a radically larger screen for the time, an intuitive multi-touch interface, and the non-screen keyboard that worked. Yes, there was a camera, internet connectivity, and one of the most iconic industrial designs ever made for a consumer product. All that helped, but what made the iPhone so disruptive was the breaking down of all the limitations that were holding back the birth of the smartphone. They made it easy. Well, Nvidia might have their own iPhone mobile moment coming, and it's based on something I exclusively revealed a couple of years ago, a virtual reality headset that's not actually a headset, but rather a simple, lightweight pair of holographic glasses. A couple of months ago, NVIDIA revealed their ultra-thin holographic VR glasses, and they match pretty much what I said in that video a couple of years ago. Rather than using traditional lenses, NVIDIA's holographic glasses use a spatial light modulator combined with a waveguide. Meta, the company, recently unveiled thin VR glasses as well, but those do not use holographic images, so they don't solve the virgin's accommodation issue that's common in most VR displays. NVIDIA's 
glasses do, providing true 3D holographic images. In addition to that, like I mentioned in that video two years ago, foveated rendering tracks your eyes so that whatever you are focusing your gaze on will be sharp and rendered in high resolution. Because there are no traditional lenses involved, there are no blur zones because what you see is always rendered in a manner that will appear in focus. The display can still create typical flat images like all the other VR headsets and converge them for stereoscopic view. But the key innovations here are the holographic nature of the display and of course the form factor. Nvidia has made VR easy. The glasses are a mere 2.5 mm thin. This goofy looking thing is of course a prototype, but as the Nvidia researchers point out, an improved version could easily be made using components optimized for this form factor. I believe this will be the key driver for the metaverse if it's ever to succeed. Simple glasses that anyone can wear and that don't require a bulky headset or cables connected to a desktop computer. It could do for VR, what the iPhone did for smartphones, make it so intuitive and accessible that it becomes commonplace. Now, whether Nvidia plans to actually release their own version of this headset, or if they just published their research in this area so that others develop their own hardware, is up in the air. But without this innovation, I don't think the metaverse will ever be more than a curiosity. No one will be walking around with bulky headsets, that's for sure. Even if you're skeptical of Nvidia's bet into the metaverse, I think it's hard to argue on the potential this has, both from the business perspective, but also for most PC enthusiasts, I would venture to say. If you're like me, you grew up reading sci-fi like Neuromancer and watching anime like Ghost in the Shell or Akira. Games like Deus Ex explored this concept of cyberspace, augmentation and simulation, and I for one find Nvidia's investment into this area extremely exciting. The promise of the metaverse is making all these worlds we grew up imagining truly interactive and immersive, moldable with our own hands in real time. Of course, if you're a fan of the cyberpunk genre, you can guess what the next evolution of this is, jacking in directly into your brain and bypassing your eyes and ears altogether. That's not as far away as people think, and I would imagine that inside Nvidia they are already thinking on how to make that possible. Building an accurate simulator of our world, or what Nvidia calls a digital twin, also means that if kept persistent in real time, you can teleport yourself to anywhere in the world. You can even time travel to the past by recreating the current world but in a different time and then teleporting there virtually. By changing the premises of the starting point of our world, you can also simulate alternative futures for our physical world, with all the dangers that come with modeling based on variables that can be manipulated to fit our purposes. By now, you're probably already familiar with Nvidia's Omniverse. Omniverse was like the plumbing or the infrastructure that Nvidia created to allow users from all walks of life to create virtual worlds together. Whether you're an architect designing a building or an industrial designer exploring the design of a new phone or a video game developer creating a new game world, the purpose of Nvidia's Omniverse is to provide the tools for all these creators to work together and share and place assets in real time in different worlds, even if they're all using completely different tools. So the Omniverse is key to Nvidia's metaverse strategy and it hints at what Nvidia is trying to do. But there is a problem with the Omniverse. The internet took off because it was easy for anyone to create content for it. Anyone can type and add images to a website. But if the metaverse is the next internet and it's in 3D, who's going to create 3D content? content for it. Not that many people know how to create 3D models after all. Not that many people are architects using CATIA or designers using Softworks. <laughs> well, Nvidia also happens to be the world leader in artificial intelligence. And the only way to democratize the creation of 3D assets is by using AI. By using artificial intelligence, creating 3D assets and putting them on the metaverse will be as easy as it is today for you to make a video and share it on social media. Nvidia 
has a team in Toronto, Canada that's focused almost exclusively on 3D content creation using AI techniques. At SIGGRAPH last week, NVIDIA demoed some of the things that this team has been working on, including an application that turns voice recordings into a 3D animated character reproducing that audio, and a tool that turns a single photo into a fully modeled 3D face. Conversely, to train AI, you need huge datasets, impossibly large datasets. By creating accurate representations of the real world, with all its physical constraints using Omniverse, NVIDIA can create worlds to train AIs in. So there's great synergy between NVIDIA's bat in Omniverse, AI, and the Metaverse. So when will this grand vision materialize? HTML1 in 1993 was very far from what we needed it to be. All you could do was post text and simple images. It wasn't until the early 2010s that HTML5 was finally complete. And today you can do pretty much anything within a browser. If USD is the common language for the metaverse, it's still very much in its infancy. And it will be over a decade for this metaverse vision to fully come together, at least as Jensen Huang envisions it. But the foundations are being laid, and NVIDIA is far ahead of everyone else. Its bet on the Omniverse and the way they are releasing research papers indicates to me that NVIDIA sees their role in the Metaverse as providers of tools, both in hardware and software. I don't think NVIDIA aims to solve the grand questions that surround the Metaverse, things like identity or creating scarcity for virtual items, etc. I think much like with the programmable shader and CUDA and AI, NVIDIA sees the metaverse as a tremendous opportunity to expand what they've always done, facilitating simulations. Now, do you know what happened to the incumbent phone companies when Apple introduced the iPhone? While Apple rose to the top of the world, what happened to Nokia, Blackberry or Palm? They either disappeared or became almost irrelevant, a shadow of their former selves. NVIDIA's competitors should take notice. Perhaps this metaverse bat from NVIDIA is more important than most realize. This video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Join my Patreon for just $1 per month and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where I frequently share exclusive bits of information. If you can't contribute financially, then please give this video a like and share it, as that really helps. Thanks for watching, and until the next one.